Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Brilliant.org. I will be spoiling The Boys Season 4. Man, the gap between TV seasons just feels so long now. It was two years ago this month that I was talking about where I'd like to see them take Season 4. Some stuff in that video I nailed, some stuff I was wildly off base on, but going back to it, it really does feel like forever ago. So I finally got into Season 4 recently, after it had been running for a while, and I had heard a lot of negativity directed toward it. So I was curious, is this the season where the wheels just fall off this very entertaining show? I know for many of you, the answer may be flat out yes. For me, it's a little more complicated. There are things that I really enjoyed in season 4. This is a show that I think almost plays better in entertaining standalone clips online than it sometimes does when taken as a whole. And season 4 made that even more clear to me. Because here's where I think I ultimately come down on these 8 episodes of The Boys. Those gory, intense moments that the show is known for, you know, the big splashy bursts of violence that get everyone talking online, and allow Anthony Starr to really play up Homelander's menace, I think those kind of scenes have long been one of the show's greatest strengths. But this was the year the shock value violence and the faux edgy character concepts the love of the sudden death is a big twist narrative structure started to actively hurt the show. And I want to talk about why. Before I do, consider liking this video to help it out and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Oh, and I should also mention that you can now find Captain Midnight on Spotify, which has been really cool. So with that said, let's talk about Web Weaver. So naturally, I'm me, I want to start with the boys take on Spider-Man, but I'm going to try to justify why here. I did not like Web Weaver, just like I was not a particular fan of Tech Knight, the show's take on Batman. Web is coming out of Spider-Man's ass, and Batman being a fascist who takes advantage of the poor aren't really creative spins on anything. They're pretty lazy variations on jokes and statements that everyone has seen online for years and years. Like, I don't know if the boys' writer's room is aware of how many Batman comics, especially in the last 15 years or so, bend over backwards to address this criticism, but at least that's an actual satirical angle, if a pretty played out one. The web weaver thing is just like a gag fit for a viral video from 2012. It was pretty stale. My much larger issue, though, is that they ate up a lot of precious screen time in this very short 8-episode season with scenes that do very little to farther the characters' stories that we care about, in service of a lot of splashy moments that will probably do well online. An example I would point to is Web Weaver's death scene. Now I should say, taken in isolation, this is a perfectly effective scene. The cast is game, the moment is tense, and the payoff is as gory and unsettling as you'd expect. But come on, we have just seen this Homelander offs and underling scenario play out so, so many times at this point. And if this were happening to A-Train, who stuck his neck out for the boys and was in danger all season, someone we had a real investment in, the fact that we've basically seen this before wouldn't really matter. I'd be on the edge of my seat regardless. But spending all this time on Web Weaver, this gag character that we barely know, I'm sorry, I just find that hard to justify in a season where a lot of our leads' stories feel so undercooked and rushed. Going for the shock value violence, or the really in-your-face satire at the expense of spending much time understanding the characters' actual headspaces, I feel like they needed a lot more material that did the heavy lifting to make what characters like Huey, Sage, and especially Butcher had going on this season feel a lot more substantial. Season 4 was very clearly a table-setting season in a lot of ways. The boys' writers clearly have their strong final season premise in mind. America falling under martial law and Homelander probably ruling with an iron fist. And they didn't want to use that premise in their second to last season. They want to go out with that as the big finish. And that's fine, I understand why they feel that way. But if that was always going to be the case, I wish they had been more okay with letting the character work in this season, breathe a lot more, and not try to plot everything like it's a season of 24, where everything has to have the highest possible stakes with the goriest possible outcomes at all times. Now don't get me wrong, this is a TV show based on a Garth Ennis comic. Shocking and quick bursts of violence have always been part of its DNA. I don't have any issue with that. 
Where I struggle is when it seems like a lot of the plotting is now being done to build to either scenes like the Webweaver one, shock value for the sake of it, with nothing new or interesting to say about any of the characters involved, or the bluntest, most obvious satire possible. And even there, again, The Boys was never a show known for the thoughtful subtlety of its political allegories. And that's fine. I get a lot less hung up on that stuff than many online seem to, but it's a problem for me when it feels like it's coming at the expense of our core cast and crowding out anything but the broadest strokes of characterization for them. Much has been made of Huey's treatment this season, and I think there's some pretty legitimate criticisms there. Going from his father's death, to the tech knight assault, into getting hoodwinked by a doppelganger, is just a lot of stuff in relatively little screen time. And I think as a result of that, it felt like the show didn't have a handle on its own tone. Something that it used to pull off with a lot of grace back in, like, season one. That's not to say there weren't highlights here. Erin Moriarty was fantastic as the shapeshifter, some of her finest work in the series, and although it's a bit of a cliché, the imposter trope has been reused from Star Trek to Buffy to Smallville to Kripke's previous show Supernatural, and way more, for one simple reason. It's reliably entertaining. But I don't think it bails out how sloppy Huey's story felt this season, and how the emotional stakes for the character will always take a backseat to an easy joke. That's part of why I wish this season had been more stripped down and character centric. The endless plot machinations, reversals, and twists can be fun, and there's something the show has excelled at in the past. I mean, audiences aren't stupid. They're gonna notice that, to paraphrase Millhouse, they're not getting to the fireworks factory this season. And I wish that instead of throwing every piece of shock value or on the nose bit of commentary into season four, they had given us a more thoughtful and and character focused calm before the storm type season. People like these characters, they enjoy spending time with them, and I think most would prefer a greater emphasis be placed on what they're going through instead of using it to generate yet another twist that didn't really add all that much. Like Butcher going full Fight Club with Jeffrey Dean Morgan. They withheld something from us to generate a cool moment, at the expense of the audience really being there in that character's headspace for most of the eight episodes. And I think that's a mistake. That's not to say this season didn't do some things well. I think it handled Ryan's subplot nicely. After season 3's finale and Ryan's Damien from the Omen look, I was a little worried that he was going to be a one-note Homelander Jr. from there on out, and thankfully that wasn't the case. I've been talking a lot about some of the empty deaths this season, stuff that only felt there for the momentary shock value and crazy Homelander YouTube compilations, and there was plenty of that to go around. But that doesn't mean every death in season 4 played out that way. Like some of my favorite Homelander material this year was him going back to that lab that raised him, even if it did play out pretty predictably. But I think it's the deaths caused by Ryan that felt the most effective, especially the upsetting death of Grace. It was far less gruesome than most on this show, but it had 10 times the impact of Webweaver or Todd's death because it felt so well built up to. The emotional stakes were high for Ryan and Butcher, and that added far more to the scene than some creative gore could probably manage. I really liked how this played out. It's one thing if Ryan becomes Homelander because he sees his horrible power and decides that he wants to live that way too, like the ending of season 3 could have implied. But it's another thing entirely to have so much of that transformation potentially be because of Butcher's manipulation and the hurt and complete loss of trust that that caused Ryan. It's a very clear emotional through line for these characters, and it's something that I feel the rest of the season often lacked. A character I think they could have handled a lot better was Sage. I think she had a lot of promise. I like the concept of Homelander having a real strategist that he can turn to in a post-Stan Edgar at Vought world. But this plan of hers that resulted in the death of Victoria Newman, it barely hangs together. I was hoping that when Sage's master plan was revealed, it would really click into place in a satisfying way. That you could look back on the events of the season and realize, oh, of course, this couldn't have played out any other way. It's not impossible that she could have accounted for the million little variables and personal foibles at play and predict how all of this would happen. She is the world's smartest person, after all. 
But it's a genius master plan in the same way that the Force knows all and controls everything in Star Wars. As just kind of something in the background, not something you can logically break down from action to action. I understand why they did it this way, because doing that kind of everything clicks into place at once type of storytelling is really, really hard, but it made Sage feel far less impactful than I think she should have. In the end, why am I saying The Boys Season 4 had a shock value problem? Again, it's not because I dislike the over-the-top violence. It's that this season, the impulse to go for that sensationalistic violence or for the most blunt and blaring piece of commentary really overpowered everything else. It just felt like we needed to have a certain number of shocking deaths per episode, a certain number of scary Homelander scenes, etc. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. But with the boys' extremely short seasons, it was really weighed down by scenes that play well on social media, but aren't terribly impactful for our actual cast. And the lack of payoff on things like A-Train's plot in what felt like to service a spin-off crossover just felt a little cynical to me. I'm on board to see what they do in this final season. What they've set up is exciting, but season four, it ended up feeling like less than the sum of its parts. And that's too bad. Listen, there are ups and downs in any television show, just as there are ups and downs in life. But the important thing is to keep moving forward and learn. Brilliant.org is there to help you do just that by making the process of learning way more fun and accessible than ever before. Brilliant.org is super interactive. It's not going through a rote textbook. It's getting feedback as you work to tackle math, science, and computer science concepts. And what's so essential about Brilliant.org is that you make these classes work on your schedule without any of the stress that you might associate with a lot of these topics. So why not try out a class like Creative Coding, where you'll learn to think like a programmer, building a strong foundation in writing robust programs. And of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what Brilliant.org has to offer. So to try it for free for a full 30 days, visit Brilliant.org slash midnight or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. That's Brilliant.org slash midnight. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.